Okay, today we're going to be talking about why is it so hard to break an eating pattern or a relationship pattern. I do a lot of healing sessions and uh, people come to me when they have had a lot of talk therapy, so normal therapy for years, but they're still having the same patterns presenting in their, their daily life and they need support with that. Love Holistic Living and I'm an intuitive health and life coach who helps HSP women get to the root cause of their digestive issues and weight gain so that they can break free and become their most authentic self. Okay, let's start with the most important distinction that we need to make which is a habit and a deep generational pattern. Okay, a habit is something that it is built it is created within like 21 days and then it is reinforced forced by uh during the following months and years that you're doing the same action over over and over time okay the generational pattern actually is it's different and it's deeper because it it is passed on to you by a lineage whether it's your mother's lineage or your father's lineage there are patterns that are called generational that are passed on to you by the dna and by dna and cellular memory and you are the one responsible or your kids if you don't do the work to break that pattern to say hey i'm stepping into my power and i'm actually ready to heal <clears throat> and break that chain and example would be someone who comes in with emotional abusive patterns so all of their life they've been emotionally abused and then soon you or I get to know that this is not just about the clients but it has been like that for her or his parents and grandparents and so on so that's what I call a generational pattern. Once we heal that, then it's a different talk about how do we change your habit to stop engaging with the emotional abuse, okay? Because we can stop attracting, but you also, a habit is stop engaging with those people, okay? Let's talk about food so it's a little bit more tangible. Uh, Food-wise is that you may have an addiction to sugar and the habit that i would look at is okay maybe after each meal you go and grab a dessert because that's what you have always done maybe like since childhood every time you finished lunch or dinner then there was a treat so that's a habit but what's the pattern here the pattern is that you're looking for comfort you're looking for that sensation that emotions that dopamine release of like i want to be loved and feel loved because that's something that I used to do with my family and that to me signifies, symbolizes um, the family reunion, that love feeling and nostalgic feeling that food represents in this matter. Okay, so now that we made this distinction, we can talk about how your brain works. Your brain is functioning like an iceberg. Okay, so think about the iceberg. And if you watch Titanic, you pretty much know what an iceberg is. There is the top part and then there's the bottom part. Okay, the top part of the brain is your conscious mind. And it only occupies the 5% of your brain. So the bottom part is, so what's beneath the water is actually your 95% of your brain called your subconscious mind. And oftentimes we think we are making a conscious decision, but it is not actually true. You oftentimes make a decision based on what's stored in your subconscious mind. Let's make it a little bit more tangible. When someone comes to me and says, I don't know why I crave this all the time. 
it's kind of stronger than me. It's, it's a force within me. And I'm like, okay, well, we don't need to explain it right now. Let's go into the session and uh, see what comes up. And oftentimes what comes up is something completely different and they had no idea. Maybe they've been abandoned in a certain situation. Maybe like they have been hurt by uh, their best friend's words and that created this emotional response and coping mechanism that now you have with, with food, okay? So it is all stored in your subconscious mind, in your subconscious brain. So this is one thing that everyone needs to acknowledge. And for me, it was a totally game changer when I started to work with my subconscious mind to break patterns and blockages in my body, physical body, emotional body, and the spiritual body, okay? Because we can go into these three, three layers and break the blockages so that you can move forward and become the healthiest and most authentic version of yourself, okay? So this is a technique that it is not done by many, but it is definitely known um, because I've learned it from an amazing author and doctor called Dr. Deborah Sandella based upon the principles of REM. And I have been in love and my life has changed tremendously and what I did was to use that in my sessions to get into the subconscious mind, have the client do the work because oftentimes the clients need to take responsibility and do some like action steps in order to let go of that pattern. And uh, then I come in and clear the body uh, through energy healing and any blockages that are stagnant in the body. So to answer everyone's question around how do I break a pattern and how do does my mind work? Well, there it is. You have conscious brain, you have subconscious mind, and oftentimes everything that you are doing these days is dictated by your subconscious brain. And it is something you cannot heal by talking through like right now when you're awake when you're in a conscious state it is something that is done through a subconscious session and that's not hypnotherapy it has nothing to do with hypnotherapy and it works magic so let me know if you have any questions and if you liked this video click the thumbs up so that i know that you've enjoyed this content and uh, we'll we'll produce more all right big ciao